Hello and welcome back to another video in this series with the DSO Foundation, where we explore the possibilities of on-chain decentralized social networking. Today we'll be looking at DSO's new MetaMask integration, the cryptographic principles that make it possible from a technical perspective, and what are the implications of this for a unified Web3 social layer. DSO is a layer one blockchain separate from Ethereum, meaning that MetaMask does not natively integrate with DSO. However, Ethereum does use the same cryptographic structures as DSO to handle user wallets. So a private key on Ethereum corresponds to the exact same public key on both blockchains. This allows for translating a MetaMask wallet into a DSO wallet fairly easily. Here's where it gets tricky. While we can easily map public keys across both blockchains, we can't use MetaMask to sign DSO transactions. And even if we could, signing each transaction transaction would require opening the MetaMask window and manually clicking the approve button, which is a less than desirable user experience. Fortunately, we can get around these limitations thanks to DSO's derived keys. A derived key is a crypto key pair that can sign transactions on behalf of another key pair, subject to some defined transaction and spending limits, allowing controllable access sharing of a user's account. In the case of MetaMask signup, DSO uses an unlimited derived key created and stored within the DSO identity. This key will allow the identity to perform DSO transactions on behalf of MetaMask's main public key, with all the convenience of DSO identity API. So how are derived keys created? Well, a special blockchain transaction called authorized derived key needs to be broadcast. This transaction contains three descriptor fields about the derived key, the public key, the blockchain height at which the key expires, and the transaction spending limit. There's also a security field called access signature, which is essentially an unforgeable certificate of the descriptor fields issued by the user whom the derived key is for. The access signature is the backbone of the security of derived keys. It basically ensures that no one can issue a derived key to another user illegitimately. Now you may have noticed a catch. Creating digital signatures requires knowledge of the private key, which obviously cannot be retrieved from MetaMask. So instead, DSO utilizes Ethereum's ETH sign method and prompts the user with the signing request in the MetaMask window that will produce an authorizing signature and effectively enable the issuing of a derived key on DSO. With some string formatting, they're actually able to display the descriptor fields in a human readable format so users know what they're actually authorizing. That's a pretty interesting feature because so far, not many other MetaMask integrations are displaying signature like this. And it's a lot more user-friendly than just having to look at a byte array. I'll link the DSO technical write-ups and blog posts on this in the description, which also have links to the code on GitHub where you can see all of this for yourself and the changes they made to their core protocol in order for this to be possible. But what does this really mean on a practical level? Basically, with a single click, anybody with MetaMask can now log into DSO. And the door is now open for a lot more cross-chain interoperability in the future. Goal being for users to eventually be able to navigate between multiple different blockchains seamlessly. There's now no need to move your ETH to another blockchain to interact with DSO. Your MetaMask is a central hub and you can easily jump between ecosystems. So improving UX while eliminating friction in the blockchain industry unlocks a lot of mass adoption upside. I personally really enjoy the cryptography side of Web3, so thanks to DSO for giving me the opportunity to learn more about this and partnering with me on this series. We've still got one more video coming, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one.